as some of you may know, um, my job is essentially, it's like an RA, except um, we call it the CA or community assistant where I work. Um, but essentially we do the same things as an RA. Um, I've been doing it for about two years now, a little over two years, and I have seen quite a lot um, in those past years. I've dealt with a lot of crazy situations, um, so that's what I'm going to tell you a little bit about today. Um, this is probably my favorite story, um, my favorite to tell. So I was on duty on a Saturday night, um, which you can imagine is the craziest night. Um, and the way it works is you're on duty, you're on call until the office is open the following day, which is at 12. So I was on duty Saturday night, and I was on duty, so I continued to be on call until the office opened at 12 on Sunday. Um, so the night, that night itself wasn't bad. But then Sunday, Sunday morning around 9 a.m., I got a call from the front desk attendant um, saying there was a girl asleep on the couch in the lobby. Um, so, I mean, nonchalantly, like, it was nothing. I, I went down there, I mean, I, he had woken me up, so I wasn't fully awake when I went down there. And I kind of looked at the girl on the couch and squinted. It looked like she wasn't wearing pants, but I, I just brushed it off and said, she's wearing skin-colored leggings. So I was like, I just went nothing. And I went to the security guard and I just... I wanted to check with him um, how long she's been there, stuff like that. Um, and he said that she she got she was there when he arrived in the morning. So I went over to her to tap her to wake her up. And as I got closer, I realized that she was indeed not wearing pants. Um, so she was pantsless and underwearless at that point. I don't know where the pants or the underwear went or if there was ever underwear, but they were all gone. They are both gone. Um, and also, as I got closer, I started to smell urine. Um, so she was not only naked from the bottom down, um, top, but naked from the top down, um, but she had also peed on the couch. And this is our general lobby area couch that a lot of people use. Um, so I, I just had no idea what to do. So I went into, I, the only thing I can think of, I went into our office and I got our, um, our tablecloth and I put the tablecloth on her. And from there I didn't really know how to proceed. So I called the manager on, on call and uh, when she answered the phone, I didn't even know what to say, I didn't know how, I just said, hey, it's Kelly, there's a girl sleeping on the couch in the lobby, and, um, she's not wearing any pants, and the manager was just, she was speechless, and she said, okay, I'll come down, um, so, when I was waiting for her to come down, I wanted to make sure the girl was okay, and we didn't need to call the ambulance for her or anything. Um, because I assumed that she had been drinking the night before. So I checked and I mean, she seemed fine. Um, heart was still beating. She still had a pulse. Um, so I waited for my manager to come down. And when we, when she got, when she came down, we, um, woke the girl up. And she was very disoriented to know where she was, what she was doing. Um. And she just had this this uh, tablecloth wrapped around her bottom half. Um, but then, as soon as she kind of became aware of where she was, um, she started yelling at all of the staff members. Um, she was saying that we stole her phone because she couldn't find her cell phone. So um, she was running around. It, probably about an hour has gone past by this point, and she was running around the lobby. Any staff members she saw, she would pat them down um, and accuse them of taking her cell phone. Um, so yeah, that was, um, so she was, she was just being very mean um, to all our staff members um, and it just was a crazy situation. And while, all, while she was running around, she also was not wearing any pants. 
um, just the tablecloth. So then eventually her roommate got home and her roommate said that she had her cell phone, so she very embarrassingly, that's a word, went back up to her room and the next day she came down to our office and apologized to all our staff. Um, so that was that story. Um, another story. Um, one day, another Saturday, um, we have to do rounds every night, um, and we check the stairwells for anything that might be happening. Um, we have someone pass out the stairwell, just, just, we just check the stairwells. Um, so I was on my, I was on a round at 2 a.m., so generally nothing, nothing really crazy happens often. So I, it was 2 a.m., I was tired, so I kind of just was going through the motions. And I looked into, there's a, like our stairwell, there's like the handle, and then right above it's just a little square window. Um, so we just peek in the windows. And I peek in the window and I, I hear someone, like, so the door's here. I hear someone and I kind of see someone here, like on the wall. And I just thought to myself, well, like, maybe they're talking, maybe he's on the phone with someone. Um, so I just thought it was really weird. Um, so then I got a call, I finished my round, and I got a call that something was happening in the, one of the stairwells, the fourth floor stairwell. And I mean, I didn't think anything of it. So I go up to the fourth floor stairwell, and it's the same one that I, that guy was talking, and I open the door. And as I open the door, I knock a girl over um, who was on her knees, um, and the guy's pants were down, so you can use your imagination of what was happening there. And um, the girl ended up being, uh, well obviously I told the guy put his pants on, um, and I had them both come downstairs with me and again called the manager on, on duty. And the girl, um, she had no idea. We told her, you know, like, go go back to your apartment or you have to go home. Or we asked her what apartment she was in. And she told us that she didn't live here. Um, but then a couple minutes later, you know, just looking up in the computers, we discovered that she did live here and she was just too intoxicated to realize that she did indeed live here. So the guy was a guest and he was sent home. Um, but that girl, she, she lived, she lived in the, she lived here for the rest of the year, so I saw her quite a few times, and I don't even know if she remembered, but I did. Forever I'll remember that. Um, so let's see, one more story. Um, this is my first night on duty ever. It was a Saturday again, and, um, I got a call because there's a, a guy upset in the lobby um, saying that his girlfriend has been kidnapped. So he, <clears throat> he, he was telling me in the security guard that, you know, he, this is about 4 a.m. He had fallen asleep in his girlfriend's room with her in the bed and he woke up and she was gone. So he said she was kidnapped because she wouldn't have left him. So he's asking the security guard and as well myself for her cell phone number so he can call her. And, um, you know, that's not something that we're able to give out. We're not be able to give out the phone number of residents for obvious reasons. So he was getting upset that we didn't give him her phone number so he can contact her. We were questioning, you know, why don't you have her phone number? She's your girlfriend. He just said he didn't have her phone number in his phone or some something like that. So um, when we couldn't give him her phone number, he started getting violent and upset and um, yelling racial slurs at the security guard, um, calling me names, um, just anything he can do, and um, becoming violent, flipping things over, throwing them across the lobby, banging his hands on the on the desk. Um, so I guess I didn't really know what to do. 
So, um, obviously I called the manager on call again, um, and I called the police. Um, so this guy, someone, one of his friends, took him outside to try and calm him down. Because I actually told him he wasn't allowed to be on the property anymore. He didn't have his guest with him, or his resident. So, he, he was getting calmed down outside. Um, and probably an hour had gone by, and the police hadn't showed up yet. So we had to call the police again. Um, and they um, still took a long time to show up. So the guy finally came back inside, and he just, um, he didn't really apologize, but he was just saying that he didn't um, have his girlfriend's phone number. And my time stops, so I'm just going to stop. Hello, I'm Kelly.